Every few years, the seemingly calm Pacific Ocean hides a secret. Beneath its surface, a powerful force is raging, a climactic phenomenon that affects weather conditions around the world. Its name is El Nino. From torrential rains that cause catastrophic flooding in South America to severe droughts that cause wildfires in Australia, El Nino is not just a tropical oddity. It is a global disruptor. But what causes this climate phenomenon? Let's find out. El Nino, which means the boy in Spanish, affects the water in the ocean, heating it by about 32.4 to 32.9 degrees Fahrenheit above the average temperature. It was first recorded in the 16th century. This phenomenon can be observed in all parts of our planet. El Nino can lead to floods, droughts, increased levels of CO2, and global temperature changes. It begins to spread from the East Central Pacific Ocean. Therefore, developing countries bordering the ocean and marine life that is not prepared for abrupt climate change suffer the most from the sharp heating of water. However, El Nino is not the only phenomenon that can affect global weather. In fact, El Nino is just a phase of a single climate phenomenon called the El Nino Southern Oscillation. This cycle can be in two other phases. One of them is La Nina, which is the exact opposite of El Nino. And the other is a neutral state where there's no particular influence of either of them. La Nina, or the girl in Spanish, is a weather phenomenon that causes cooling rather than heating of water. In general, the water temperature during La Nina decreases by as much as 37 to 41 degrees Fahrenheit. The consequences of this phenomenon for many countries around the world, such as the United States and Canada, are severe rainstorms, floods, and stronger hurricane seasons. But the worst part is that these two phenomena are very difficult to predict and therefore to prepare for. They occur every two to seven years, so they're not regular. Moreover, they're not short-term phenomena. El Nino lasts about nine to 12 months, while La Nina usually lasts one to three years. El Nino and La Nina do not appear out of nowhere. Their formation is a very unusual process. Under normal conditions in the Pacific Ocean, trade winds move from a high-pressure zone to a low-pressure zone from east to west. These winds direct warm water in the direction of their own movement closer to Asian countries and Australia. Thus, cold water rises in the east on the coast of South America, which also has a positive effect on fish catch due to the saturation of such water with nutrients. This process is called upwelling. Warm water warms the air, which causes it to rise faster into the lower atmosphere and condense, while cooler air returns to the eastern parts, thus supporting the trade winds. However, if this balance is somehow disturbed, then El Nino or La Nina begins. During El Nino, the winds weaken so the warm water is not affected by the wind movement to a large extent, and upwelling also decreases. Consequently, the water in the Pacific Ocean begins to heat up evenly in normally cold areas. This in turn means that rains are also changing, causing dramatic weather changes in all parts of the world. For example, in the tropics, the chance of flooding increases, and in Western countries, droughts increase. As an example, we can cite the protected area in Hawaii, Pu'awa'awa. Under typical conditions, the average rainfall there is about 2.7 inches in January, but under El Nino conditions in 2010, only 0.4 inches fell there. However, over time, one place of Enso can change to another, such as La Nina. 
During La Nina, the winds, on the contrary, become stronger, which increases upwelling and reduces the areas of warm water in the ocean. So, for example, the western parts of the United States and northern parts of South America may experience cooling, while areas in the Indian Ocean may experience warming. Consequently, the regions bordering the Pacific Ocean suffer the most from these phenomena. Approximately 30 to 60 million people died due to severe drought and floods in India, China, and Brazil in the 19th century. In the 20th century, 26 cases of El Nino were recorded, which seriously affected the harvest of Western countries, and in addition, the population of various animals, including sea lions. Thus, the main victims of El Nino are such South American countries as Peru and Ecuador. Most of the economy of these countries depends on the export of fish and fertilizers. However, due to El Nino, Upwelling decreases, which leads to massive fish kills and precipitation increases, so crops and fertilizers are washed away and civilian infrastructure is damaged. On the other hand, droughts are looming in eastern regions such as Indonesia and Australia. Because of this, water bodies and crops are beginning to dry up, which negatively impacts the standard of living and health of people and animals, as well as land fertility. African Eastern countries such as Kenya or Tanzania, as well as American countries, suffer from frequent rains, while South Central countries like Zambia or Mozambique suffer from drought. The South United States, in particular Texas, also suffers from increased precipitation during El Nino. However, for example, in California, the phenomena brings rain, which has a positive effect on the harvest of crops like lime and avocado. In particular, Canadian winters are becoming milder. Interestingly, El Nino also affects Antarctica. In its western part, it becomes a little warmer, so more snow falls. But due to a decrease in upwelling, shelf glaciers begin to melt. On the other hand, La Nina helps to increase the mass of these glaciers, which helps to maintain the balance. The direct impact of ENSO on European countries is difficult to document. El Nino brings cold and dry winters to the European continent, which can be harmful to the land. For example, in the 18th century, El Nino greatly affected the harvest of European countries, which was also probably one of the reasons for the outbreak of the French Revolution in 1789. Already in the 19th century, this phenomenon caused about three severe famines in various Asian and European countries. So El Nino and La Nina are quite dangerous phenomena for our world. The last time El Nino and La Nina were observed was in 2015 and 16, almost seven years ago. 2016 was the hottest year on record. It was the most severe of all previous El Nino episodes in the last 50 years, which led to hunger for more than 60 million people. In 2015, equatorial waters were warmer than usual for the entire year, the central part of the ocean then warmed up by almost 37.4 degrees Fahrenheit at its peak in November, and the overall warming temperature was 35 degrees Fahrenheit, which is likely to be a record value since 1860. All continents have been affected by El Nino, directly or not. For example, Australia experienced severe droughts, especially in its eastern and northern parts, this resulted in an early start to the fire season on the continent, with a total of 125 fires. The fire severely damaged large areas of nature in Tasmania, including rainforests and swamps that had hardly ever experienced fires before. Moreover, the worst coral bleaching was recorded during this period, a process that causes corals to turn white and become very vulnerable to death. 
The spring and fall of 2016 in Australia were among the driest on record, so the harvest was significantly affected. In addition, the heat reduced supplies of ore, the most exported commodity. Regions in Asia also suffered from different weather conditions. For example, 85% of the Philippines and Indonesia experienced severe drought. Large-scale fires broke out in Indonesia, which worsened the air quality in neighboring areas, including Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, and others. The fires also affected the export of palm oil, which led to higher prices for the product and, as a result, for all food that used the oil. In addition, rice production in Vietnam and Thailand has dropped significantly, in particular due to water shortages. India, in turn, has reduced its supplies of rice, sugar, cotton, and corn. The northern regions of China suffered from droughts, while the southern regions were affected by rain and floods. South America has been severely affected by weather-related disasters in all regions. In 2016, Peru experienced severe flooding and landslides, causing about 5,000 people to lose their homes and reducing shrimp production. Moreover, 150,000 people had to be evacuated from flooded areas in Paraguay, Brazil, Argentina, etc. In addition, Argentina experienced one of the largest locust infestations, which severely worsened the state of agriculture in the country. Adding to this, the return of rains in April 2016. In Colombia, famine started due to droughts. About 2.3 million people needed humanitarian aid, according to the UN. In the Caribbean, there was a shortage of drinking water. St. Lucia even declared a state of emergency in the country. The varying impact of El Nino in Brazil led to a sharp rise in coffee and sugar prices around the world. The United States and European countries, on the other hand, hardly felt the direct impact of El Nino. The states of Missouri, Mississippi, and the United Kingdom received more precipitation than average, but this didn't seriously affect their economies. And finally, the African continent also suffered economically from this phenomenon. Food production in South Africa fell by 6 million tons. In some parts of Zimbabwe, 75% of the harvest was lost. 10 million people in Ethiopia needed humanitarian aid, and about 458,000 children were treated for acute malnutrition. In total, 60 million people around the world suffered from hunger. In addition, unfavorable weather events led to disease outbreaks, especially in Africa and South America. Thus, due to floods in several countries of South America, the Zika virus began to spread, and in Africa, outbreaks of cholera and Rift Valley fever in the east of the continent, as well as malaria, were recorded. In particular, animals suffered from the effects of El Nino, such as marine birds or small mammals, which sometimes causes predators to attack farm livestock. The populations of invasive species, such as locusts and tree frogs, have also increased, spoiling crops and increasing the spread of dangerous diseases. We should not underestimate the seriousness of the danger brought by El Nino and La Nina. Meteorologists are already recording signs of El Nino, which is very likely to begin in late summer 2023 or very early in 2024. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, researcher Dylan Amaya and World Meteorological Organization Secretary General Pateri Tallis, we may set new global temperature records next year. One of the reasons for the sharpness was the very long La Nina period, which has lasted three years and only ended in March. So a lot of heat energy has accumulated in the ocean. And therefore, after the cold snap, all this heat will be released, which will strengthen the effects of El Nino. 
It is still difficult to say whether the 2015-16 scenario will be repeated as there are no two El Ninos alike due to the difference in the periods of this phenomenon and the overall climate situation on Earth. However, there are already several forecasts of what to expect from the upcoming El Nino. A candidate in climate science at Tracasca Castro names four possible consequences for global weather in 2023-2024. First, it's possible that the ocean temperature could rise to 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Moreover, during its peak, temperatures may rise even more as they did in 2015 and 16, but according to this researcher, it's too early to predict how severe this temperature increase will be. Secondly, after a long period of La Nina, Australia has had a lot of rainfall, but this could all change next year. As the overall temperature on the continent has increased by 34.5 degrees Fahrenheit compared to the beginning of the 20th century, a new super hot year could cause early fires. Thirdly, not only could a humanitarian catastrophe recur in South America, but outbreaks of serious diseases like malaria, the Zika virus, or dengue fever, it could reemerge and even brain disorders and miscarriages due to abnormal heat could spread. In addition, the Amazon rainforest, as well as those in Africa, India, and Australia, may experience severe droughts, which will reduce the growth of vegetation, and as a result, less CO2 would be absorbed from the atmosphere. And fourth, Northern Europe can expect cold, dry winters while Southern Europe can expect increased precipitation, in particular, the North Atlantic may experience a cold snap. During El Nino, access to food and drinking water becomes more acute, so there will probably be no exception this time. Australia, Brazil, Peru, Africa, etc., all of these countries and continents that had a hard time with their dramatic climate change in 2015 and 16 may unfortunately, experience a severe food and economic crisis again. It's also possible that exports of many agricultural and livestock products, as well as mining and fuel products, will decline dramatically with an indirect impact on the entire world. NOAA also suggests that the United States may suffer from a strong increase in precipitation in the eastern part of the country and a strong heat wave in the southwest and south. A study by researchers at Dartmouth University led by Christopher Callahan estimates that the effects of this phenomenon will cost the global economy about $3.4 trillion over the next five years. Thus, the second half of 2023 and next year could be extremely difficult periods for the entire world. However, El Nino and La Nina will not stop there. There is a possibility that in the future they become more serious, more frequent. In particular, these two weather events may disrupt the formation of tropical forest in the future. However, one of the main drivers of the increasing impact of El Nino and La Nina is a greenhouse gas emission, which further warm the panel. Therefore, in the long run, we can expect that high global temperatures may become the norm and continue to rise, which will become an even greater threat to the world. The possible future deterioration of the weather situation on the planet is a signal to all of us because only taking care of the environment can protect us from catastrophic consequences.